Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. And what a week it's been for the football club. From the despair on the south coast at Southampton last week to the elation of a 4-0 Premier League victory against West Ham United at Goodison Park on Wednesday. And of course, the appointment of a brand new manager. And without any further ado, let's hear from the new boss. Sam Allardyce sat down with Everton TV's Adam Clark at USM Finch Farm shortly after his arrival. It's got ambition. You know, that's the one big key thing for me. It has ambition, and they, and the, and the ambition going forward is is uh, very important for any any player and any manager or any coach or anybody that works with the football, or any owner or director. Um, ambition is is what you need to have, and uh, hopefully. Uh, we can deliver to the fans, which is their ambition to see this club get as high up that league and challenge. A lot has been written about and, and spoken about your key principles, so just explain a little bit more about those and, and, and how they all play it's a, a part secret. here. <laughs> um, uh, the, the, it's a simple game and uh, there are basics to the, the game that are imperative. and. Uh, those basics will be placed clearly in front of the players on if we get these basics right, then you will be able to flourish both in and out of possession and, and produce much more and much better results. And uh, those basics are or very rarely or haven't changed over the last 20 odd years I've been, been working in the game as a manager. So those basic principles are, are what I'm promoting to the players. They grasp that, that gives them more opportunity to play better. They express themselves in that and make their own decisions within, within those structures, if you like. And um, we'll monitor those, those basics. We'll monitor, have we got better at them? Have we done, have, let, let's just take it simply, have we done better on defending set plays? So are we conceding this amount of goals? So in the next four games, can we make sure we try and get the ultimate goal first and that's not conceded off a set play? How many goals have we scored on a set play? Um, can we improve that by one or two goals? In open play, how many times do we enter the opposition's box? Um, can we do that more with a bit of better quality? Are we getting enough players in the box? Defensively, are we all getting back into our shape? And when we get back into the shape, are we shutting the team, the opposition down the right way to deny them spaces to play through us and round us? So all those basics will be a, a monitoring system for, for the players to be shown and looked at and, and given the opportunity to see where they're going right and where they can get better. And it's very important that we promote the good things and not, not the negatives. The negatives will have to be shown, but the positives will be very important to generally finish off with and say, look, this is what we're doing well, let's, let's move on, let's improve on that, and let's get better at these things we're not quite doing as well. I know you've said previously that playing for Tampa uh, in your playing career shaped a lot shaped of your my, Yeah, shaped, me, football, shaped my, uh, my thinking. I think it shaped and changed the whole dynamics as me as a footballer when I came back um, probably helped me last to 38 to play I don't think there's any doubt about that uh, and then to put it into practice when or if I became a manager um, and, and could afford those uh, those budgets to put the, that staff and, and, and that type of infrastructure into place and I think that uh, um, because I'm still here and still managing, shows that I was right to choose that route, route which was uh, probably highly criticised in the early days, but everybody seems to be following that, that sort of direction now, and, and rightly so. What was it specifically about sports science and its implementation? Me in measurement. It's, it's, it's measurement in terms of a player's measurement is, can be done in training. We've got live data. Uh, on their physical performance now. Um, we've got data on a player's performance in, 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 in the game. Uh, we've got sports scientists who are logging data, um, nutritionists who are keeping body fats, strength and conditioning coaches keeping looking at body mass, fast twitch muscles, 
uh, sprinting, physical fitness, um, it, trying to prevent injuries, medical staff, and uh, and then into one area which will be big for me, I think, particularly at this moment in time, will be sports psychology. I think that it's it's generally still quite ignored in, in this country, getting better, but, but a good sports psychologist in the building would would help us all, would help the staff, would help me, would help the players. Coaching the mind as well as the body? Well, if you don't do that, then the, the mind doesn't control the, the right areas at the right time and make the right decisions at the right time. It gets clouded, the pupils get dilated and, and bad, bad decisions are made. And it's, um, you know, it's a simple fact that that, that is what, what we are and that is what we are as human beings. Bringing it back to you getting the job, you said when you left Crystal Palace that you wanted to take a bit of time out. You wanted to, to leave the rigours of, of club football behind for a while. I didn't just want to take a bit of time out. I was convinced that would be enough now. Um, but, but, you know, it's Everton, I suppose. It's the traction, you know, the, 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 the club itself, the people who I've known at the club, the people who, you know, I said before, who've worked at the club and told me what a great club it is and I've always thought it was that and... And, and hopefully I can uh, put this uh, difficult spell behind us as quickly as possible and start looking upwards. It's been a difficult start to the season, but is this a, a clean slate now for everyone at Everton? Uh, I'm, I can't guarantee anything just yet. I think that um, I think that you know all I can say is you know previously I have managed to re revert a difficult situation into into a positive and uh, at the everybody's at the end of the season has has felt relieved more than anything else by by getting back into the right area of the Premier League which is up up and around midway or or if we can beyond that um and then build for build for next season as quick, quickly as possible i think the recruitment in january will be a possibility i don't think there's any doubt about that but that's hard, that's very difficult, finding players. Managed to do that last two clubs, which were Sunderland and, and Palace, and they made so much of a difference to the team at that time. Uh, so that fresh face, that, you know, that new player, you know, can bring a little bit of something to the team that gets them that little bit better again. But the main priority at the moment is to try to get all the players fit and, and keeping them fit so we've got a... a a big squad of players to select from and healthy competition for places. Your first game will be against Huddersfield Town this weekend. How much are you looking forward to walking out of the tunnel? used to play for Huddersfield, by the way, many yeah, years so ago. Yeah, that was going to be my next uh, question. Fantastic journey they've had um, uh, last season and, and, and this season. Um, and one which will be very tricky, I'll know that from the start, because they drop in deep and, and put 10, 11 behind the ball and sit and frustrate you and and so that's going to be a, a big challenge for the players on Saturday mentally they have to be ready to try and break that down but not leave that back door open because we may very well have a better possession rate than than Uddersfield Town but it's not about the possession rate that's going to matter at the end of the day it's is have we scored one more goal than them that's what what really matter so we cannot overextend ourselves and I'll have a quick break or a counter-attack uh, against against us and all of a sudden they've not been in the game and they score a goal uh, and that's what we'll have to sort of compete against on Saturday. Well that was the new boss there, Sam Allardyce. Let's hear now from our major shareholder, Mr Farhad Mashiri, has been speaking to the Everton show about the appointment of Big Sam. I think more than anything he will bring stability. He's a strong leader, a great track record, and he will be able to stabilize Everton's position in top half of the table and give us a platform to move on. And I think in many ways, he's the most underrated British manager. Uh, a lot of people have forgotten his work at Bolton, where they played very good football, uh, and he uses the players he has, very effective and a great leader. That's what we need. It's positive, the message to the fans now? I think so. I think they have a leader in this 
club at, at Finch Farm, which provides stability. He give it all, and you know his focus 24 hours is this club. Uh, I followed him for many years, and I've been a great fan of him. Uh, so this is the biggest stage for him, and I'm sure he will rise up to this. Well, those two exclusive interviews with two big names from Everton Football Club have wrapped up part one of this week's Everton show. But don't go too far away, because after the break, I'll be joined here by Franny Jeffers, and we'll also hear from David Unsworth and Wayne Rooney. <laughs> Welcome back to part two. As you can see, I'm joined by Franny Jeffers. Franny, the last two weeks at this football club have had a little bit of everything. Yeah. But let's start with the new gaffer, Sam Allardyce. What are your thoughts on that? A good appointment, isn't he? I think, you know, very experienced Premier League manager. Good results in the Premier League. So, as I say, uh, I think it's a good appointment. What will Sam Allardyce bring to the dressing room? A presence. A feel. A bit of character. Mm. You know, that's the way I, I, I know the new gaffer. Uh, when I see him, he's always got a smile on his face. Uh, you know, when you look at him from from out, like we have been for many years from the outside, uh, he's a bubbly character, isn't he? Uh, but he's a top manager as well. He's been round the block, hasn't he? He knows his way around the Premier League. Yeah, and, and, and you know, let's not get away from it. You know, we were at the wrong end of the table. We, mm. we still are. We're still not where we want to be. Uh, and you know, a bit of experience around the place. People who've been in that situation before, people who've got teams out of it, it can only be can only be a good thing. And, I, and you know, not not just to get us out of trouble, but to take this club forward. You know, uh, you have to get this football club. I feel to manage it. Uh, if you don't get it, or if you don't know it before you come here, you have to get get to know it really quick, and, and get what it's about, and get what the fans are about. And if you do that and embrace that, I believe you've got a right chance of succeeding. I think everybody's excited to have him around, but I just want to speak to you about David Unsworth as well, who, in very trying circumstances, has done a terrific job. Well, I think, I mean, where were we when he took over? Eight, eight, 17th, mm -hmm. 18th, and we're up to 13th, aren't we? I mean, you know, we should be higher than that. No, you know, there's no, there's no ifs and buts about that. You know, it's been disappointing, but I think Unsworth's done an absolutely terrific job. You know, don't say that because he's, because he's my boss or he's, <laughs> or he's my mate. I think he has. You know, in circumstances that have been really tough. Some uh, tough games as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did, and and, and he also had the uh, having to deal with, you know, the odd game in the Europa League where we were out the competition, mm -hmm. and you know, Unji being Unji and being a massive Evertonian, and he could have went into that game and played, you know, all the lads who've been playing and thought, you know what, I want to want to get a result for myself, but mm -hmm. you know, he done the right thing, although albeit it, it didn't quite go to plan. Uh, he, he looked after the team for for the Premier League games, I think, and. Uh, you know, they're, they're brave goals, I think. He said all the right things, didn't he? He's conducted himself superbly well. You know what? He has said all the right things, but he's just said what he believes. You know what I mean? He's, he's a massive blue. He's like myself. Uh, and I believe he's, done a, he's done, a, done a fantastic job in circumstances that he's, that he's been faced with. I thought the reaction of the crowd on Wednesday night during the West Ham game towards the end and also after the final whistle with the shouts of Rhino, Rhino, yeah, yeah. I thought that was terrific and it, it, was, it was a lovely reward for him. Yeah, I mean, you know, it must have been tough. Uh, he's had loads of success with the under-23s uh, and your confidence would take a bit of a bit of a hit, you know, with results. Uh, two heavy defeats, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to be low on confidence, but I'm, I think, and I'm sure the fans understand the circumstances that he took the job in. Mm. Uh, and they're right behind him, aren't they? They know he's got, you know, this club at heart. He's, he's a massive Evertonian, you know. And uh, I think, you know, to finish to finish on a on that sort of note with a with a, a good performance, uh, you know, fans singing his name, Wayne getting a hat trick. Mm. You know, it was it was a, it was a lovely night. I felt. It doesn't get better than that for David Unsworth. Let's hear from the man himself, who's understandably delighted to see out his caretaker reign with a comfortable victory. They play, play like men who, under a difficult circumstance, thought, them, thought to themselves, we're going to have a go. And um, they did that collectively as well, not as individuals. They did it as a team. We, we've had to tinker and, and change the, you know, the way we play a little bit to try and be a little bit more effective. And, and we got a clean sheet, which... 
which is fantastic, which is absolutely fantastic. And when you keep clean sheets, you know, it gives you a massive platform to, to progress up the league and, and progress in games. Have you scored many better now? It's like a three iron. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I think um, it's one of, if not the best goal I've scored. I think I hit it as well as I've ever kicked a football. And um, to, to make it my third goal, my first hat trick for Everton, delighted. Yeah, terrific performance, great individual performance. He ran the game for us. Um, his his goals were quality. His third goal, you never, you'll not see a better goal than that all season. Um, and he was just a wonderful influence and he, he's a great guy. I've got to um, give a lot of thanks to David Unsworth. He stepped in at a difficult time um, for the football club. Um, he's a true Everton person. Um, he stepped in and he's tried to steady the shift for us. And I'm delighted for him that we've we've got this victory because... It's an important win for the club, but also for David Underwood, so um, I'm pleased for them. What did it mean for that reception you're getting from the Gladys Street? Everything. It means everything. It means it means the world to me, and um, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Franny, Wayne Rooney just continues to write his own scripts, doesn't he? It's it comic book stuff, isn't it? It is. It is. It's the, <laughs> it's the talent, though, isn't it? You know, you, people say he writes his own scripts, but he's a phenomenal talent. Still is. Uh, Playing in a different position, it's one of them. And you playing wherever you want, can't you? you? Know when you're a young lad and you say, "Where does he play? Where does he? Or he be the best player if he played anywhere?" And and I think that's that's the case for Wayne. You're talking about writing his own scripts. Gladys Street end, 60, 65 yards to complete your hat trick, and it was some goal, wasn't it? There's not many people on the planet that can score goals like that. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a straightforward ball rolling towards him. You know, it, it was Joe Hart coming out kicking it, and, and if you think if you watch it back, it's actually got loads of spin on the ball. And Wayne probably looking at the ball coming at him, he's probably accounted for all that because that's how, how good a player he is to to strike it the way he did. You know, to keep it as flat and, and for it to go as straight as it did, he would have had to account for that. And it, it, it was a special goal. You and him go back a long way, don't you? You made your England debuts yeah. together. Yeah, same like school, was. same area, uh, and to to make our you know. Our England debuts together was was a special moment for, for not just me and him, but for, for the area where we grew up in Crocky there. And for Everton Football Club. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't at the club at the time, but Wayne was coming was coming through, and you know, I, I was an academy graduate myself. Uh, I'd moved on at the time, but special special times, you know, to play up front with him. You were on the pitch, weren't you, when Wayne scored that never to be forgotten first Premier League goal past David Seaman? Yeah. It surprised an awful lot of people, but it probably didn't surprise you. Oh did it? no. Didn't surprise me at all. He's he's got that in the locker, and mm. <laughs> I mean, still. You know, still, still, and he and he always will. He always will, you know. Regardless of whether people say he's this, he's that, he's not the player he was. He's, arguably, for me, as I have this argument with people all the time, he he has to be close to being one one, one of England's all-time mm. greatest. You mm. know, you you don't break records at Man United, break records for England, and mm. if if you're not one of the all-time greats, and we're fortunate enough that we've got him back here and I say it to my lads all the time and the under 23s, you should be watching. You should be watching the way he conducts himself, you know, the way he goes around the, the training ground, the way he plays, the enthusiasm. He's a, he's a role model for, for, for all young lads at this club. Talking of the 23s, how much have you enjoyed oh, I loved it. your brief tenure in charge of the 23s? Oh, honestly, I've absolutely loved it. it was, you know, <clears throat> I think I spoke to you last week and you just get thrust into these roles, don't you? And, Actually, when you're the manager, you get, you get a bit more caught up in the game, I'm sure, as you've seen with me, you know, quite... Uh, you never know, do you, when, you, when you're a coach and you're sitting there and you're, you're, only, you're only throwing little nuggets in and helping the lads here and there and the manager's controlling what goes on. But actually, when you're in charge, you only find out what type of person you're going to be then. And I don't think I'm ever going to be one who's going to sit there and <laughs> no, neither do sit I. there and watch, watch the game flow, you know. Has it whetted your appetite? Do you want a bit more of it now? Yeah, I, I've got a long way to go though, Daz. Uh, great, great opportunity for me. Loved every minute of it. Uh, it has whetted my appetite, but it was, it was something I wanted to do anyway. Mm. Uh, I've worked hard the last last three or four years uh, getting to where, where I am. But a lot of learning to do and you know what? Uh, Unzi's probably not happy, but he's coming back to, to the under-23s. Uh, he's probably happy with me saying this, but I'm delighted because who better to learn off than him, mm. and, him and John Ebrill, who've, you know, were great coaches anyway, but to have not been 
manager and assistant of Everton, you know, the, the things that I can pick up off them are going to be are going to be the little nuggets that if I ever get the opportunity to go and manage at whatever level, uh, and you know, it'll be special, mm -hmm. won't it? The, the things I've picked up off them will, will definitely help me along the way. It has been a terrific learning curve for you, Franny. But let's just end with a quick word about the first team. Huddersfield Town this weekend at Goodison Park. The win against West Ham was terrific. Yeah. But we've got to build on that, haven't we? After bit we have to build on it. And I think I mean being at the game obviously and seeing the way the fans are, you know, I, I sort of getting behind the team, which they always do, but there was an extra special atmosphere I felt, whether that was because of it was Runzi's last game or what. But you know, the fans need to turn up again like they did, which I'm sure they will. Uh, and what an opportunity to to get another three points on the board. Huddersfield are no no easy team. There's no easy games in the Premier League. I watched them against City. And, you know, although they had to defend for long, long periods in the game, they've still got a threat going forward. They've got decent players going forward. We're going to have to be on our game. But after after the West Ham game, you know, it'd be criminal, I think, if we didn't, if we didn't build on that. And, and beat Othersfield. Let's hope it's another special occasion at Goodison Park. And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. My thanks enormously to Franny Jeffers. As I said at the start, what a week it's been. Do enjoy the rest of your week and do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.